Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Yes, it's Shira again. I said we were going to do this for a little while. So this is another golden super adventure book. This is Princess of Power, The Crooked Crown, written by Dwight John Zimmerman, illustrated by Fred Carrillo, cover art by Fernando Fernandez. Fernando Fernandez also did the cover art for Glimmer of Hope. And Fred Carrillo did the illustrations for Glimmer of Hope. And it's a very pretty cover. And there's a lot of pink going on here. Yes, as we previously established, Spirit is pink, Swift Wind is white. Apparently this was a Hasbro property. Though the Swift Wind figures were actually white. also like to point out that Swift Wind does not have gilded wings. Maybe he has gilded wings in this book. Don't know. We need to read to find out. One beautiful morning, Queen Angela said to her daughter Glimmer, I'll be away today visiting a neighboring kingdom. I want you to look after things here. I will, mother, Glimmer said. I'll make sure nothing goes wrong. You can count on that. Uh -oh. Now where you see where this is going. Also, I believe that's Catra in the background. Yep. And we also see some difference in the coloring in this book. Like, they're giving her gray accents. That's Glimmer. With the belt being gray and the shoulders being gray on the outfit. Which isn't how she's been rendered in other books, where she's mostly had blue as a belt, and the shoulders have been the same color as her shirt. Mm-hmm. Though in that one, her shoulders are also blue. That one being Glimmer of Hope. Yes. Wanted to compare apples to apples because they're both the same illustrator. But so. maybe the illustrator didn't have any control over the printing colors. Mm hmm I was about to say, the illustrator may just be responsible for the line work, and it could be someone else who's responsible for the colors. As Angela flew off, Glimmer, Princess Adora, Madame Raz, and Frosta waved goodbye. Yes, now's my chance, said Katra to herself. When Angela is away, Catra will play. I bet I can find something in Angela's palace that I can use to wreck Glimmer's day. While she is busy gabbing with her friends here at Crystal Castle, I will sneak into the palace of Bright Moon. Catra, do you not have better things to do than make the princess miserable? I don't know, like maybe kidnap her? <laughs> also, nice hiss there. And, as I said before, overall, the art's nice, though the coloring is just kind of odd how they keep failing on that it's got to be something to do with the budget or like printer limitations something yeah that's what i mean like budget could be also a print limitation as well something to get the colors so consistently wrong they got to have quality check teams checking this stuff they've got everything else right the illustrations match the show which is more than can be said for some other shira products I have a hand mirror where her headdress is completely wrong. Hmm. You mean like that over there? Worse. Ah. Another book cover. We'll be getting to that later. Catra sped off to Angela's palace and quickly slipped inside without being seen. She soon found what she sought. The treasure room. Couldn't she just steal stuff? But apparently she's planning to do something else. Yeah, I remember Catra being more dangerous than this. Oh, look at all this, Catra cried. Surely I can find something here to make mischief with. I wouldn't be looking in the treasure room for things to make mischief with. I would be looking for things to steal. A few minutes later, an object caught her eye. The crooked crown, purred Catra. It has more than enough magical power to destroy Glimmer's day. It's perfect, and I know just how to present it to Glimmer. Hmm. You could play a very good Earther kit. I, I don't really think you get to play as actresses unless you're doing a documentary on them. Eh? Hey. <laughs> Glimmer and her friends soon arrived at the palace. Glimmer sat on her mother's throne and began to worry. My mother always knows what to do. I hope I don't fail her. Don't worry, Glimmer, Princess Adora said. I'm sure you'll do just fine. Suddenly a palace servant entered carrying a beautiful gift box. What could this be? Glimmer asked, taking the box. 
A present from an unknown admirer, the servant said. Unopened, going to the daughter of the royal house. Yeah. Doesn't have a note attached to it or anything. From someone they don't know. Yeah. Wouldn't it get, like, checked, double-checked, triple-checked, and maybe quadruple-checked again? Also, the rendering of Glimmer over here only has one small color error on it. Right here, where it's pink, it should actually be the same pink as her crown. Everything else is, like, nicely done. I like the way they did Catra, and all the other people look really well done. I don't really see any really being off, except for maybe in the lower corner with, what was her name? Free something? Frosta. Frosta. The face looks kind of... It matches the proportions in my head of the Winx Club. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I, I could see that. Opening the box, Glimmer said, Why, it's a jeweled crown. It's a shame it's bent. Still, it's so lovely, I must put it on. <coughs> dun, dun, dun. I've seen that crown somewhere before, but where, Madame Raz said. Why do I suddenly feel so worried? Oh, if only I could remember. Glimmer, be careful, Adora warned, feeling troubled. Accepting a gift from an unknown admirer may not be such a good idea. She's right, Frosta said. I think there's something crooked about this. Oof. Boo-dooch. Rimshot. Oh my gosh, crooked! That's it, Madame Raz cried. It's the terrible crooked crown. Adora, take it away from Glimmer. Quick, or something awful will happen to her. But she was too late. When Adora tried to take the crown from Glimmer's head, a huge bolt of energy sprang from the crown and hit her. I have an important mission to right all wrong in Etheria, Glimmer said, as if in a trance. I must be off. Goodbye. You all the weakest link. Goodbye. Uh, oh. <laughs> or ugh. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard a female voice director in a a TV show around that time, go, ugh. Um, yeah, that's actually U-N-G-H, so it's more of a, <laughs> Yeah, everything looks pretty well rendered, though. The pose on Adora in the first page, yeah, it seems kind of like she's hailing a taxi more than anything. Etheria is in big trouble, Madame Raz said. That crown is cursed. Whoever wears it gets an urge to use its power to do good. But the result is always bad. I'll stop, Glimmer, Princess Adora said as she rushed out of the palace. Reaching her horse, Spirit, Princess Adora drew her sword of protection. Holding it high, she shouted, For the honor of Greyskull, I am Shira. Instantly. Instantly? Thirty seconds to a minute later. She was transformed into the mighty Shira, and Spirit became the winged unicorn Swift Wind. Come, Swift Wind, let's find Glimmer. And that was the first time the saying was in a box. Yes, normally it's been in a speech bubble. This time it was in a text box. And just once again, yes, Swift Wind is pink, but this time it's like all pink because they also did the face mask in pink. Yeah, I guess they spent all the color budget on this side because everything's well rendered in this little uh, square on the same page. And then you go over to where Shira is and there's not a lot of color going on there. No, the box showing Adora and Madame Raz is much more detailed. Glimmer, riding the flying swan Enchantra out over the sea, spotted some starving sailors adrift in a lifeboat. Please give us some bread, the sailors cried. Why should you eat only bread? Glimmer asked. I can give you something much better. Crooked crown, let them eat cake. Whee! Suddenly a magical shower of cakes fell on the sailors. Thank you, great princess, they cried. But Glimmer did not hear them. The moment she had cast her spell, a sharp headache hit her. She forgot all about the sailors. Why not ask to be rescued? Yeah, I thought that was going to be the thing. Like, they were going to ask for rescue or they asked for the food. And then, um, oh, couldn't you actually just, oh, there she goes. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure Enchantra could drag the boat. Yeah. Giant swan. Probably. Yeah. I can't say 100%, but I want to also say Enchantress should be white. I don't remember her being in the show much. I remember it was more of a toy line thing. Could be entirely wrong. Like I said, it's been at least three years. As Madame Raz had predicted, Glimmer's good deed was turning out bad. 
the magical shower of cakes wouldn't stop. Our boat will sink under the weight of all these cakes, one sailor cried. Quick, throw them out, shouted another. But for every cake tossed overboard, ten more took its place. We're doomed, the sailors cried. Whoops. That's a lot of cakes, and it just apparently keeps falling out of the sky. Yes, and apparently it keeps falling directly into the boat, no matter where the boat is. Because even in mostly calm water, which this is definitely not, the boat would have some motion. Mm-hmm. Oh. Suddenly, the sailors heard a sweet but commanding voice shout from the sky. Don't worry, I'll save you. Down, swift wind. It's She-Ra! Hurrah! the sailors shouted. Quickly, She-Ra lassoed the bow of the lifeboat. She guided Swift Wind to the nearest shore. Thank you, She-Ra, the sailor said as She-Ra went off to continue her search for Glimmer. Because you do still see cakes falling, so... Mm -hmm. And she's very clearly towing the boat at this point. And I would get out of the boat and, like, use it as a snack bar. A never-filling snack bar. Mm-hmm. Well, at least until the power of the Crooked Crown is broken. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Glimmer and Enchantra were soaring over the whispering woods when Glimmer saw some peasants. They should not have to live in rags when I can give them riches, she told herself. Yeah. But again, as soon as Glimmer cast her spell, she felt enormous pain. It's almost as if the crown were getting too small for my head, Glimmer thought. Uh... Once again, Glimmer's headache was so bad that she forgot about the people she had meant to help. And once again, she had done more harm than good. All our hay is turned into gold, one peasant cried. But the gold blocks are so heavy that they've crushed our carts. What good is all this gold if we can't move it, another peasant moaned. Uh, actually, that's... Yeah, you could still live with that. I mean, one bar would do you good. You just... Grab a bar, have some friends stay, take the bar, cash it, or grab like five. Yes, you could all take several, and you still have your oxen. Yeah, you can still so, use them. So this is a little more doable, but still, property yeah. damage. That's a lot of gold. It's several carts full of gold. At least two, because there are two carts in the picture showing hay, and we see one full cart and one partial cart in the gold shot. So you can do it in teams, like one guy goes off with some, comes back, another person goes off, comes back. Yeah, I mean, going through the Whispering Woods, they should be pretty safe. Because the trees don't move around if you're nice, and they would help screen you from anyone who would be trying to rob you. Whoa. When She-Ra and Swift Wind finally caught up with Glimmer and Enchantra, She-Ra was horrified at what she saw. Glimmer, cried She-Ra. How did you get such a swelled head? Okay. I have been busy helping the poor and helpless of Etheria, Glimmer shouted pompously. When I am finished, everything in Etheria will work perfectly. I don't know, Glimmer, Shira said. It's usually best to make sure you know what you're doing first, and then to see how it's turned out. Okay. I kind of see what kind of lesson they're going for, but they're kind of going about it the wrong way. But to describe the art of Glimmer right now, I'm trying to, um, it reminds me a lot about like a, ch kind of like a chibi show, but like an American thing recently. I'm not trying to. I would just say it looks like a bobblehead doll. That's what I was trying to go for. Giant head on a small bo bobblehead. And we don't get to see how Shira would have helped the peasants with the gold apparently. Well, their lives aren't in immediate danger, so. Mm -hmm. You're wrong, She-Ra, Glimmer said, and I will show you. See that farmland around Thamor? The crops are dying of thirst. I can make it rain. You'll see that I know how to do the right thing. She-Ra tried to talk Glimmer out of it, but her friend wouldn't listen. The head actually is slightly smaller in this shot than the previous shot. Mm. Close up versus wide angle. Mm-hmm. And then we can see another comparison over there of scale. Mm -hmm. She-Ra and Glimmer landed just outside of the village of Thamor. Madame Raz and Frosta were there to greet them. Oh dear, Madame Raz cried. The crooked crown has worked its curse on Glimmer, and I don't know how to undo the damage. What are you babbling about, Madame Raz? Glimmer said. 
I feel fine, and once I cast my rain spell, you will see that I am the greatest princess in Etheria. Now everybody, stand back. She looks so shocked right now. Glimmer with her giant head. Though Frosta is suffering a little bit from that Winx Club thing I mentioned earlier. It's just the styles don't quite match. And I think it's because of her slightly angular features compared to Shira and everyone else. Yeah, but Catra also has angular features, but she didn't come across quite so Winx Club. And she doesn't come across that way in the series, as far as I recall. Instead of a gentle summer shower, Glimmer's rain spell unleashed a raging monsoon. This rainstorm is going to flood the whole village, Madame Raz cried as she and Frosta ran for cover. Not even my spells turn out this badly. Ooh, ow. Yipe. Glimmer, you must undo your spell before everything is ruined, Shira said. I, I can't, Glimmer moaned. My head, it hurts so much, I can't concentrate on anything. Yipe. Just the way they're scaling things. I wonder how they did it. I wonder if they just drew her head large and then... Because you can't just do the scaling like you would do nowadays in the computer. Xerox. Yeah, the Xerox technique would work. On a cliff overlooking the village, Catra, protected from the storm, gleefully hissed. Everything is working out even better than I had hoped. Suddenly, to Catra's surprise, the whole cliff started to shake. What's going on? Catra yowled. Has Glimmer started an earthquake too? No, no, I'm thinking it's a flood of some sort. I'm thinking it's Shira. Oh. Ah! I, I see what you mean. But it wasn't Glimmer. It was Shira. Not realizing the Catra was hiding on the cliff, Shira tore off a large piece of it. She used it as a plow to dig a giant trench to catch the water that was rushing toward the village. Just when it seemed as if the water would win the race, Shira finished the trench. Tons of water crashed into the ditch. The village was spared. Wow. Olympic sprinter. Just pushing that giant boulder. Oof. Oh, you know, she is He-Man's sister. And the line work and everything and... I think the only thing is, like, Shira's headpiece is a slightly large, I think, in this shot. Compared to how I think it would normally be, yeah. When Shira was satisfied her work had been successful, she rejoined Glimmer. Madame Raz and Frosta came running up joyfully. I've been such a fool, Glimmer cried. I made such a mess of things. Even with the power of the crooked crown, I couldn't solve all of Etheria's problems. The minute Glimmer said those words, there was a loud pop. Suddenly the crooked crown flew off her head. Glimmer broke the spell, Madame Raz cried, and Glimmer's head started to shrink back to normal size. And it is normal size. Yes, also Enchantress suddenly looks much smaller. Yeah, I wonder if they were just accidentally scaling her in the process. Yeah, she looks more like the size of a large turkey. Mm -hmm. Not the size of a epic swan mount. Yeah. Just then, Angela came flying by and landed near Glimmer and her friends. What happened here? She asked. Oh, mother, I'm sorry, Glimmer cried. I tried to do good things just like you, but everything went wrong. If it hadn't been for Shira, our land would have been ruined. And she quickly explained what had happened. When Glimmer was through, Angela said, Glimmer? You have learned a great lesson today. It is not enough to have power. You must also have wisdom. One day you will be a great queen. Yeah, of course. Not grounded? Yeah, I was like, she's going to be forgiven. I just know it. The art's pretty good in that shot, too. Mm-hmm. Nothing seems off. The colors are all relatively well done. Except for that, still that weird gray thing with her color scheme. Well, I think that's consistent throughout this book. It's slightly bluish on the cover, but throughout the book it's gray, so it's consistent for the book at least. Mm -hmm. As everyone was about to leave, there was a sudden splash of water. A wet, angry Catra pulled herself out of the lake. What were you, of all people, doing in the water? Shira asked suspiciously. I was running away from the rain, Catra hissed. 
Then the cliff started shaking. The next thing I knew, I was in the water. Uh-huh, Shira said. I think that story is like you, Catra. All wet. Oof. Oof. I, I give you a five points for that pun. That's out of a hundred. <laughs> so, yeah. At least this time we got more of Shira's superpowers. Mm -hmm. Pushing a boulder to create a trench. Yeah. A boulder that she ripped out of a cliff. That's definitely something He-Man would have done, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was an entire episode where they spent, like, this is going back to He-Man, where they spent, like, a good minute and a half of He-Man trying to crush a rock between his hands that made people permanently disappear. And in the process, he was disappearing, but he managed to crush it before he disappeared. Yep. And an entire, and an entire time, his theme song was playing. He-Man. That's pretty much the only lyric it had. But it was pretty epic. Yeah, 80s. It was a simpler time. Yeah, also not so simpler. But if you look up some news from that time, you can see some crazy stuff going on. Oh, yeah. But I meant, you know, the music and the harmony and the arrangements. It's nothing like what we get now. I'm sure there were a few exceptions out there. There always are. Mm-hmm. So? So, out of the three we've read so far, this is actually the one I remember the best. Mm. And it's funny, I think it's one of those kid things. I don't remember thinking about when I was younger how off-color everything was. I had to have noticed. I watched Chiba very dedicatedly. But out of all of them, it's the one we haven't gotten to yet that I remember being the most off-model. Mm. I think it's interesting for these super adventure books that they used a different artist to do the cover, which is what gets you to pick up the book, than the illustrations for the story itself. Mm. And looking at the final book, no, it's not Hasbro, it's Mattel. Most of these shows from the 80s were done specifically for toys. Especially He-Man. G.I. Joe, He-Man, Transformers. Name any show from that era, it was probably conceived as a toy first and then made into a TV show. Yes, but there's actually a book about He-Man. Mm. Specifically the toy line that launched. Ah, Masters of the Universe. Mm -hmm. And so this has been Princess of Power, The Crooked Crown. Written by Dwight John Zimmerman. Illustrated by Fred Carrillo. And cover art by Fernando Fernandez. Slight difference in the back cover too. It only shows The Crooked Crown. And then I think this bottom part is a little more engaging. Instead of look for these other Golden Super Adventure books, it really invites you in more. It goes, how many of these Golden Super Adventure books have you read? And then you just start looking down going, okay, which ones do I have? Which ones do I have? Because there's Masters of the Universe, Princess of Power, Wheeled Warriors, GoBots, and Conan. Conan yep. wasn't listed on the other ones, I don't I'm think. I may have to look up the Wheel Warriors one, because I was a big fan of that series. And I don't really remember it at all, but if you go watch the intro, it's like the 80th thing ever. And it kicks tail. Go watch it. I think you can actually find the entire series on YouTube if you look. Probably, but if you only want to invest a few minutes, just go watch the intro. You'll enjoy it. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, there are a couple other Princess of Power books recorded. Already listened to those to get to this one? We have lots of other books. Did you actually listen to all of those? There's a whole bunch of videos in the main section. There's no way you got through all of those. Like this book and would like to track down a copy? Check below for an Amazon link. If it's in print, we will try to get you one. If not, you can still go shopping on Amazon. Or check out Ebates. Sign up and get cash back for shopping at places you probably already shop. Also, you'll get a welcome bonus when you make a qualifying purchase. We get a little kickback too. So it's kind of nice all the way around. You get to support us financially without giving us any of your finances. That's win-win, right? Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Thanks again for listening.